Hello everybody, Brad the Guitologist here. Enjoy the video. What's up dudes and dudettes? Brad the Guitologist here. This is something I found at uh, Goodwill. This is a monitor radio model MC160. Made in Indianapolis, Indiana. This is a uh, this is a this is like a CB receiver, but it only receives one fixed channel, and there's no way to there's no way to speak back. It's just a receiver, so it's not a transmitter. Yeah, it was ten dollars and ninety nine cents. You know, I don't know. Don't ask me why I bought this thing. <laughs> I just did. Main reason, I guess, is because it has its tube and it has a 12AX7 in it, a single 12AX7. It's got some other tubes as well. And it's not very big. I mean, it's like the size of my hand, maybe, long. Um, but this tube right here is a 12AX7. It's a uh, GE. Let's see, what is this label? What does that say? Oh, it's a Motorola label GE from 1968 uh, this unit I believe is from 1960 we're missing the missing the cover on that that one um, I'm just kinda curious uh, to see if we can get this thing to receive anything um, it's got a it's got a built-in uh, speaker with an output transformer here um, speakers torn all to hell the cone but it should still make some noise um, it's got a vibrator so this thing was meant to be installed in a vehicle I'm guessing it was meant to be installed in I don't know like a, like a piece of, of equipment maybe like a piece of uh, dump truck or something I don't know um, but why they would want to receive only and have a fixed channel I'm not really sure um, unless they just couldn't couldn't produce interference on other channel I, I really don't know that's a weird weird thing not something definitely not something you see today yeah this is a 1961 30th week of 1961 on that but this uh, vibrators uh, these vibrators are kind of interesting if you've never um, uh, messed much with radios and I'm not much of a radio guy either but um, I do know what these vibrators do basically what they do they change uh, DC or they don't change DC into AC what they do is they uh, mimic AC by um, uh, taking DC signal and turning it on and off rapidly so basically what you've got is a, it converts it into a square wave DC signal and uh, that signal is fed into one side of a transformer into a primary and then it's stepped up on the voltage on the other side uh, so uh, when this DC mimics the AC with this square wave it produces a voltage on the other side on the secondary so essentially that's how it works and that's how they got around in the old days that's how they um, were able to have tube radios inside cars even though they only had 12 volt batteries at their disposal for power. I'm going to plug it into my little power supply back there. We'll feed it 12 volts and see if we can't get it to work. I've, um, I've downloaded the uh, I've downloaded the part of the schematic and the, the SAMS is uh, several more pages long besides just the pages I was able to download. Um, but we may take a look at that too in this video. Um, but uh, I thought we might try to just get it going, and really, this is just more of a diversion than anything else. I'm not, I'm not real serious about trying to fix this thing or anything like that. I'm just screwing around here. I'm, in, I'm kind of in between projects. I'm waiting for uh, some parts to come in so I can complete another uh, project. And rather than start a longer project tonight, I just thought I'd put this thing up on the bench and see if we can make it make noise this might be also something in a future date you know like gut and turn into an amplifier maybe something like that 
I don't know. Yeah, see, basically, uh, other than the uh, vibrator, um, it's, you know, it's got a regular power supply that we would see in a, a normal sort of tube amplifier. And I'm not going to do anything to this. I'm not going to change any caps or anything like that. I'm not that bothered about it, really. I, I'm just kind of curious if, uh, if we were to plug this in, if it were to actually work. Let's see, where does our power get injected? Let's look at this. Let's look at the schematic, see, like, because that's not even hooked up to anything, so I'm not sure what's up with that. Um, the power has to get to this somehow. Maybe this is the power up here. This this might even be the power. Yeah, this is the power because here's the switch. Okay, that's the power right there. So that's the antenna, and that's the power. All right, it's off at the moment. Okay, let's see what happens when I turn it on. Looks like there's a short. Let's see if we can get the vibrator going. These vibrators are notorious for going bad. They just, a lot of times they won't even start. Um, I've got a couple of these somewhere else. I'll try to remember where the, try to remember where the heck they are. Yeah, a lot of times they're just, they're completely frozen. Um, and I think that's the case here. That's why this one isn't working. Uh, well, I guess we could tear it apart though and see why it's not working. Curious if we can get it going uh, by dialing up the voltage under load. Okay, it appears to be going. Yeah, it's going now. Let's see what we're getting over here. Like nothing really. But you would think I would be getting the voltage on the other side of the transformer. The vibrator's vibrating. I can hear it anyway. Um, that doesn't necessarily mean it's it's putting out anything. It just it is vibrating though. Right there to there, I should be able to read um, some AC. 1.9 volts.
but that's not translating to anything on this other side of the transformer though that's the thing there's nothing there's nothing at all um, that appears to be coming off of that because that should be going over here to the rectifier and it's it's not there's nothing there I should get well I mean I should get more than than 1.7 volts AC right there I think we must have a bad transformer if that capacitor was shorted that would be a problem okay so here's this vibrator apart and you can see the date code here 1970 so this is a replacement part uh, and here I'm taking the rubber coating off of the uh, off the internals and that's there basically to uh, to dampen down the vibrations and to basically silence it or well silence it as much as it possibly can be silenced but you can see all the dirt and just the grime and there's a there's a cracked uh, lead right there and just you know all of the rubber parts are just really uh, really brittle and it just you know the whole you can see it cracking apart right there so this thing is just really old and all the black stuff that's in there is basically uh, bits of just you know carbonized whatever uh, from this thing you know operating for so long and it's ba it's coated the entire mechanism so it's you know it needs a really good cleaning to stand any chance at working. So um, at this point, I just plug it back into uh, into the chassis and you know hook up the power, and we're just going to see what it does. So we're going to flip the thing on and see if it starts to vibrate. And you can see here that it is vibrating, in fact. Uh, but there are no sparks. It's not creating any sparks. There are two... Um, contacts one on each side there and I'll show those to you momentarily you'll kind of get to see them a little bit better but we need, we need to clean this off or to have any chance of sparking so I'm going to spray it with some contact cleaner and uh, we'll get into the contacts also a bit later and try to clean those but you can see some sparks beginning to happen there that is supposed to happen consistently on both sides for this thing to really operate correctly and it's not creating any sparks on either side so what i'm doing here is actually pushing the contacts a little closer together uh, physically and you can see the sparks on one side there started to begin and the reason i'm doing this voiceover right now is because i listened to iron maiden records throughout this entire <laughs> part of the video and i you know i'm just going to get a huge copyright strike if i leave all of the original uh sounds so unfortunately that's that's the reason i have to do this but uh you can see there's some sparks starting to begin on both sides, but again, those sparks have to be continuous in order for this thing to operate correctly to get a, a nice square wave um, simulated AC. So what I decided to do was spray it again and uh, run some run some sandpaper between the contacts, hopefully trying to burnish these contacts. And here's some original sound so you can hear, you know, what the vibrator sounds like. And you can see the sparks and everything there as well. And at this point in this process, I'm just basically just screwing around. I'm, I've lost all hope of trying to get this thing going. I think it's got other issues. The transformer seems continuous on the primary and the secondary, but I think there is a short somewhere else, and it's preventing the uh, filaments from even getting lit up on any of the tubes, so... Rather than actually troubleshoot this thing, I just kind of got sidetracked and started playing around with the vibrator. <laughs> and 
In the background, you can hear the whirring of my uh, power supply on my desk. As this thing starts up, it kind of it draws down the current. But if it stops, you know, the current kind of spikes because it has, uh, it has no nowhere to dissipate. There's some fairly consistent sparks going right there, but that's only because I'm it's only because I'm pushing the mega mechanism over slightly with that chopstick. It's really a balancing act to get one of these vibrators going correctly because everything has to operate it just, you know, just so this the spark gap has to be exact on both sides not just one side and also that um, that little center bit that's doing the vibrating that has to be in a certain position to even start vibrating if it's in the wrong position it won't even begin And there again, we have some more consistent sparks going on. But yeah, I think you get the idea from this. Um, at, like I said, I'd basically given up on trying to get this thing to work and had resigned it to be in parts anyway, even from the outset. This was always just going to be a, hey, let's screw around with this thing kind of uh, operation. It wasn't really a serious attempt to fix it or anything. Because, I mean, you know, even if I did fix the thing, uh, who's going to want a, a, a static channel receiver in the year you know 2000 what year is this <laughs> 2018 so anyway that's all for this video i hope you guys have enjoyed it if you have please hit subscribe down below and we'll see y'all later